Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are live on Hashtag Transformation Tuesday and Shane Griffin is in the house. He is the founder and CEO of the Vitamin Patch Club. I'm so excited about this. Thank you. By the way, came Thank representing. You. Cool hat, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the shine on the head would screw up all of the lighting. Oh, so so I covered up and then the beard up light. <laughs> so it works. So it works. Shane, we were excited to have you on because you have a very fascinating story. Thank you. Um, you know about recovery, which we talked about would be uncomfortable Absolutely. talking about, and um, your journey from owning a bunch of nightclubs into making a big, huge difference through philanthropy through your work. Tell yeah. us a little bit about well, that journey. Well, you know, the short version is um, I was very happy in my previous life. I was having a lot of fun. I owned a lot of nightclubs, and I was, you know, the toast of the town in Toronto. And my little past bubble. life, he means this life, but the past life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's in a two and a half. It's a precursor to sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but what I didn't know is I created this this alter image of myself, this ego, that I was uh, I was performing up to what I thought people saw me as, which created insecurities and low self esteem and low self worth. And it, I didn't know any of this at the time. I wish I did, but I kind of don't because I had to live life. And after I sold all my nightclubs for two years, I didn't know what was wrong. Like, I, I didn't have that status anymore. You weren't the guy around Toronto that owned everything. And um, I fell into a mild depression, I guess, and I used more, and I was in drugs and alcohol. And uh, it was a trip in Greece, ironically, that kind mm -hmm. of lit the fuse for me. And then I went to treatment. And it was, it's really, you know, we were talking just a couple minutes ago, it doesn't need to be more complicated than you see something wrong. You see a busted pipe in your sink. Are you gonna let it flood the floor? Now, I wasn't aware that something was wrong until those two years, and I, I kind of regret, if I can use that word, that I didn't act earlier. That's about the only real regret I have, is that I mm -hmm. took the two years to feel so bad, and to, I call it the tears after the beers. You know, I would sit after the whole party left, and I'd be at home doing drugs and drinking by myself, and you just have, and I, I, I don't wish this on anyone, it's this, this feeling of just weight that succumbs you that just you know you don't feel you feel less than you feel worth that worthless and and that compounds the issue of course because then you believe that's your reality right so I was tremendously fortunate um, I've got I'm very close to my family I've got an amazing older brother who caught wind that that I was thinking about going to rehab and he's probably the most direct guy I know so he got me in his car and he said look I'll never bring this up again he goes but I've got a plane at the airport and I booked you in a place and if you don't go love you and it wasn't the guilt, it wasn't the shame, there was a little bit longer than that. <laughs> yeah. TV and a few words in there too, choice words. But I've got beautiful nieces and nephews, and he said, the one thing that really struck me is he said, look, I didn't know it was this bad. You're a pretty smart guy. If you think you've got a problem, you probably do, go fix it. Mm. And that was pretty much simple. So if you would mm. think there's something wrong, you're already there, mm. because there is something wrong. Right. You know, I've had people, I work with, uh, uh, pro bono with people all the time, counseling them and um, the biggest question is do you think I have a problem I'm like you just answered your question yeah, right. you know as soon as you're stumbling upon it we're, we're pretty pretty intelligent right. beings mm -hmm. so you, know? you got on that plane got on that Tell plane us about that journey. yeah and it was it was the most rewarding and scariest trip of my life obviously I brought alcohol and booze with me on the plane or and drugs on the plane finished midair didn't come into the United States with anything <laughs> um, and I was petrified I mean, driving up, and I, you'd think driving up the coast in California, ah, but I was coming down and scared, and it never really hit me until the moment that they pushed the button on the gate and they said, admitting Shane Griffin for treatment. And then I crumbled, and that was it. Tears flow, but um, crying is, is super beneficial. Mm -hmm. and, and that's whenever I just went, uh, I'm here, I'm here now, this is it. This, like, this is happening, this is real. So, wow. so before we talked about, because you went to Passages, which is a very famous, a lot of celebrities, and I think what's remarkable is that you went one time to rehab, which is very unusual, actually, especially for someone who goes to Passages, because it's like another country club, and you go in, it you is. have a rehab, and you're like, I feel great, let's get back there and party, you know? Like, so what do you think it was that set you apart from not The simple back? answer is I'm extremely driven, um, I am brought up by a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, I, it's a failure I accept openly mm -hmm. because you learn from it, mm -hmm. but this was not an option. I wanted to be there. I wanted change, and I did every single thing they told me to do, and I will tell you that the therapists there are exceptional. Mm -hmm. 
the ambiance is beautiful, the food is wonderful, um, there's a lot of outdoor activities and things you can do, but if you're there to work, the people that are on the ground floor, they care, mm -hmm. and they are with you in it. And the one-on-one -on -one treatments, I love Excel, I, I love, I'm addicted to self-exploration now, mm -hmm. learning what, what my weaknesses are and living in my truth and understanding and helping people and giving back, like these are things that just overwhelm me now, right? In, in a wonderful way, not to the point that I'm jeopardizing my life in any, so it's not an addiction, it's a positive influence. Mm -hmm. But they were, uh, I just wanted to do it. I wanted to do it and, and the most important thing I can tell viewers is when you are finally at that crossroads, and you are about to leave that treatment center, you need a plan. A lot of people come out without an aftercare plan or they come out with a, a minimalistic one. Uh, they don't set goals that look unreachable. I said, I'm gonna come out and I said, I'm gonna be a public speaker, I'm gonna be a thought leader, I'm gonna help people, I'm gonna change the world and I'm gonna make impact. And to a guy that owned nightclubs that served up drinks and mini skirts for 15 years, that didn't seem attainable. Mm -hmm. But I had a, a, a vision board in my head and I had a vision board in my home. And it was being in, in settings like this. I, I'm so humbled and grateful that I'm here, but it's all because I said I would. Mm. So what you is know? your mission? My mission is to make an impact in the world and positive change. I mean, that's really what the precipice is of, of Vitamin Patch Club. Uh, I'm a nutritionist. I went back to school after treatment and I got certified as a certified nutritional practitioner, a registered orthomolecular health practitioner, and a life coach in 18 months. So I went day, nights, <laughs> and weekends. Wow. Um, so that, that addiction thing is actually helpful <laughs> to me. <laughs> and um, and I've, I've, had, I've had a few other businesses since I, since I finished uh, treatment, and they were always in the capacity of helping people. And I don't know much, but I know one thing. I'm good at helping people. Hmm. I'm good at solving problems. I'm good at listening. I have real life experience, and I love to make impact. And in my previous business, I was doing that one-on-one, -on -one, which was rewarding, but I'm also, got, and I'm very honest with myself, so I'm very truthful, I've got very thin skin. So if you didn't do well, I was a failure. And still in my first five to six years of recovery, that was a lot to take because I was helping people through their, mm -hmm. their journey. And I said, there's gotta be a way that I can make bigger impact. And that's how we came up with the concept of Vitamin Patch, we call it philanthropeneurship. It's a business based on giving mm. back. I love that. Um, and I, I can't take credit for that. It was coined by a friend of mine in Montreal. He said, that's what you're doing. And I'm like, then let's do it. You know. And we just want to change the world one patch at a time. We believe every month that everybody can do more. It can be sitting on, this, on a, uh, stop your car, park for 30 minutes, pay the dollar 35, and sit with somebody on a park bench and listen. I mean, realistically, it can be that simple. It can be a check, because lots of people can't, don't, can't afford the time. But I or joke, a patch. Or a patch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I joke with people, if you've got time to know the scores and the runs and the batting practice and all that, you've got time to give a half an hour to help. Because wow. it doesn't take much. That, that's, that is our mission at Vitamin Patch Club, is to change everybody's life one patch at a time and in turn changing the world's mm -hmm. so making powerful. an impact. So important. Well, I love the shift that knowing that um, you know, some of the recovered alcoholics I know are some of the most dynamic people. And I truly believe it's like, if you can create that much insanity, you can use that and create all this other stuff. And they're just some of the most dynamic people I know. And so I just think it's great. It's a great fellowship. And just want to honor the 12 step and recovery know that it's possible for anybody. It's it is. It's not an easy journey, but it's possible. It's so, it's so and we were, we were actually speaking, oh, we have a same bracelet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mine says truth. Mine says live my truth. There you go. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I, that's my whole <laughs> message. Shout out to Chris Pan yeah. and so my siblings. intent. Yeah, I just right. noticed that. Uh -huh. But here's the thing that I say. I think a lot of the treatment is set up for failure to the individual. Um, because it, the, one of the things is relapse is part of recovery. No, it's not. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. That, that's something, a token. So let me give you a quick scenario, an example. If your mother or father told you you would never, ever make it to first base, you'll never hit the ball, you'll never make it to first base, or it's the hardest thing you'll ever do, hitting that ball and then running at the same time, would you think you could ever do it? Would you ever pass that milestone? It'd be much more challenging. And rehab tends to be you know, this big cloud of, oh, it's gonna be so hard and my whole life is gonna change and who am I gonna be and what's gonna go on? And, and it's, it's not, you're you, you're individualistic, your style, your compassion, your caring, your nurturing, you're a human being, we're just one race, the human race, we need to love each other a lot more, but you need to love yourself. And if you can just understand that it is, it is just a simple thing, it doesn't have to be complicated, it's set up to make it look like it's so hard. Hmm. So if you think it's gonna be so hard, then of course it's gonna be hard, then we find excuses not to succeed. 
And then every problem, the, res the result is I should go have a drink or I've got to yeah. deal with, manage the crisis. And it's really, we said it's mm -hmm. simple. I have people ask me, how have you been around nightclubs still and all these social events and out all the time? I don't order a drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the honest, what do you do? I just don't order a drink. Yeah. Well, if I don't have one, one, I won't have 20. Yeah. Right. You know, if I won't have 20, then I won't get into the drugs and I won't do the late nights. And, I've, and I'm, like I said, I'm incredibly driven. I love, I love this life. That, that I've been so wonderfully provided as a second, a follow-up act, scene two. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it just keeps getting better and better. Well, where, where can people get involved with the patch? So Vitamin Patch Club is available online at vitaminpatchclub.com. Um, some of the great merits of that, I don't want to pitch it too much because really I believe in the product so well that if you try it, you'll love it, you'll use it. Um, but the main reason, the idea behind this is basically think of a nicotine patch, remove the nicotine, embed it with nutrients. Mm -hmm. Same delivery mechanism, you have time released, so you get maximum absorption over a period of time in the day, so you're not causing digestive mm -hmm. load and toxic load in your liver with swallowing a bunch of pills. And the efficiency rate of the patch is 90% because it bypasses your GI tract, which is mm -hmm. a wonderful, wonderful merit to it. Um, we have three products. We have a vitamin D3 and a vitamin C combined. We have a, bi a biotin or B7, which is great for hair, skin, and nails. It has a ton of other benefits, but those are the most common right. ones that people thrive for. It. And this is our B B12, B6, and B9 patch. And what's Improve the energy, for it? reduce stress, anxiety, breaks down fats and carbs. All yes, right. that's the mis misnomer. People think that B12 gives you more energy. It actually helps break down fats and carbs, which in turn turns into positive energy, it turns into energy. So we it's not love like that. So <laughs> and, and right. We're easy to find. We're vitaminpatchclub.com. All right. I love this. Well, such an inspirational Thank story. You, Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you so much for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. We'll be back with more on Good Morning La La Land.